Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And uh, Alex, how much do you know about, like, marketing? I know a little bit. Uh, Not to say I'd be, like, a professional or anything, but I I know the basic fundamentals of trying to get things out there. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. If you were to, like, try to market, I don't know, like, stuff or things, like, what would you do? I'd do stuff and things with them. Oh, perfect. You know, I think that we might need a little bit better insight into this. And so, uh, luckily, all the way from Australia, we are joined by Mr. Keith Franks. Thank you for being on the show, sir. That's me. Hello. Yeah, that is you. (laughs) Unless there's somebody else hiding in the show bowels. (laughs) Excellent. So, Keith, tell us a little bit about what, tell us a little bit about what you do. As a social media manager, yes, um, it's it's all about maintaining consistent. Um, it's sort of like if you imagine if you have a billboard, right? The billboard is always on just because it's there, and people will always see it because of its location, right? Mm-hmm. So social media marketing is more like having a billboard, but you have to make sure that you control where it's put because the location doesn't just sit like if I had it on my shirt. It'd be on one picture in that one spot forever. But with social media, you get to choose what pages it shows up on, and you get to choose what people's feeds and stuff that it comes up on. Oh, or okay. You can choose exactly who it's delivered to, where it goes, what the billboard says so that it appeals to those people. It's a lot more about finding your target market than it is about scribbling on the side of a wall somewhere. <laughs> right. Well, you know, scribbling on the side of the wall has very limited audience. Well, it depends does. on the wall. Depends on the scribble. Those, <laughs> those are good factors, and uh, mean, we're back to stuff and things. You, you've got a Facebook wall. That, that's a, a wall that you can scribble on. That's true. That's true. I and guess they that, call it a timeline now, so maybe not. Yeah, that is also true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's very hard to scribble on timelines. <laughs> and, 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 unless it's like a Michael Crichton novel. But... That's not what we're here to talk about. Uh, as you were mentioning, Keith, you, you are a, a social media manager. That, that is a thing you do. And yes. why... Welcome to the millennials' career choice of 2017. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, this is, this is one of those careers that really just sprung up in the last like decade or so, I, I guess. Yeah. Just because it didn't used to be... Social media wasn't even a thing once upon a time. So why did you get into it? Um, mostly by accident. It was an opportunity that I had to expand an existing role that I was in. I was a video game tester. Um, and because I had experience with Facebook front end and a bit of marketing through managing my own music stuff back in the day, um, the boss was like, do you want to help run our Facebook campaigns and media releases and stuff like that? And I was like, yeah, sure. And part of that gave me a whole bunch of experience with running Facebook front end and scheduling stuff and appealing to Tiger Markets, which was like a leg in, (laughs) but easier to catch up and learn about lots of different nuances with it. And um, like I've taken a course for it online that Google has, which is. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's like I said, it's all about knowing where and what you have. So if you can make sure that working on my first project was a video game, um, we already knew what the target market audience was because it was a publisher that pushed sports games in Australia. Mm -hmm. And so that's a pretty specific audience already. And when you already know what your target market is, it's very easy to push to that demographic by making content that appeals to them or even just like we were saying earlier before, uh, posting in the right time zone. Being at 3 a.m. local time, no one's going to really see it. But right. if I'm trying to appeal to an overseas crowd, posting at 5 p.m. my time might be a bit better. I see. I see. So uh, not only just knowing, like, the, your audience, but also where they're located in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, I mean, as as we were saying, you're you're in Australia right now, and we're in the United States, and there's a bit of a time difference between those two places. Uh, so you have to consider that. 
So yep. uh, when you said the millennials, uh, was it Nathan or you? One of you said the millennials. Uh, <laughs> he did. That was me. Job of choice. Uh, how much of this stuff for social media marketing and the like, how much did you already kind of know what was going on before you even took this on? Um, when, when writing my own music stuff way back when, you sort of start by like inboxing everyone saying, hey, look at my stuff. And then like you realize how bad that is really quickly. And it's the same sort of thing once you've mistakes uh, and everything. You sort of learn what things work, what things don't. Um, and then when I ended up getting to trying out the Google Garage course, a lot of it was like um, really, really intro things, like how to work social media or what kind of social media you should be using, like Instagram or Facebook or whatever. So it was all kind of like making sure I knew what I already knew. Right. And it's all really straightforward anyway. A lot of it has its own sort of walkthrough as you're doing it because they want to take your money. So a lot of it just comes down to refining what's working and being able to analyze and being like, hey, this target market isn't super effective. Maybe I'll swap to another one or I'll narrow it down or I'll aim it more towards something that has already been successful. All right. So uh, on that note, are there are there certain like social networks and groups that work better depending on what you're trying to market? Well, yeah, for sure. Um, Instagram, I found has been really good with just showing off art assets for my game, for example, because I can post it on there and people will see what it is and whether or not they want to learn more about the game or not. They will be able to see more of the art as it comes out. Um, I always find that Twitter's more like. A billboard than it is a communication platform because you're kind of just yelling at everyone <laughs> um and if people want to hear you yell at them or like hear more about what's coming up whatever then they can follow into that and then they'll see things as they come out but i don't really feel like it's conducive to conversation mm. when facebook is like super interactive uh, on the other scale where like um, whenever people comment on my posts, I'm always there replying to stuff and joking around with people and i've got like people that inbox me all the time and like stuff like that, so you can really engage with people. Uh, it's a lot easier to ask questions and stuff like that. Is that partially because of like Facebook pages being set up, that kind of thing? Yeah, Facebook pages function very similar to being a user, which is kind of handy. Like you've got your own inbox, you've got um, all your posts function the same as your wall would. It's the same as being friends with someone, except I post a lot about my board game. <laughs> yeah, I I, I kind of liked the uh, thing because I mean we have a few projects that are going on and we have some Facebook pages set up for those. Uh, just the fact that I can still be in my profile and also work on those pages at the same time, I just find convenient in general. Yeah, and getting notifications on your personal account as well when stuff pops up. Oh yeah, um, I find is really good too. I use that a lot. Like there's a special app that Facebook has, which is like an automatic message or thing. It's like, your campaign has ended. Here are some stats for you. Or do you want to review this? Or like all that kind of stuff, which is really good. Um, well, I obviously can't ask it questions because it's a bot, but like it's there with the information and it's notified me my campaign is over and it tells me who the target market was, what the kind of reach was, what kind of engagement it got. Excellent. Exactly yeah. going on. Straight to yeah. my inbox, yeah. my personal account. Oh, beautiful. Uh, yeah, you get really into the stats. I do, so. Um, it depends on what it is. Like, a lot of the time, I'll be like, yeah, that was kind of what I was expecting. Or, because um, a lot of my campaigns, I run to, like, a very specific target market, or I'll set it up to reach just particular people. So it's a lot of the time, it's just like, yeah, that's what I expected. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, six more women than I would have thought liked this page. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the problem with board games is like 98.99% male. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very uh, male-dominated industry, yes. <laughs> it's getting better. It's getting better. It is. It is. Uh, especially among players, because, I mean, I know that from my own game. So, um, Now, what sort of things do you happen to market, more or less? Um, well, right now, the main project I'm working on is my board game yes which has had some pretty good success as far as from launch to now it's concerned it's only been around for about four months 800 mm -hmm. likes we've got pretty consistent engagement on pretty much all of the release posts 
Um, yeah. And then I've got like a couple of other ones like Instagram and Twitter that I don't use as much, but I still dump all the new stuff on there. Sure, sure. Which obviously, like I've got a hundred followers on Instagram from not really doing anything on it, which is kind of good. Yeah, yeah, that certainly is. That's a hundred uh, more than we have for Dell. Do we? <laughs> Do we yeah, have but Dell's is a podcast. That's not really your target market. You can't look at a podcast. Exactly. There, I don't see a reason for a po- uh, us as a podcast and a website that doesn't have anything visual media to have an Instagram. It's exactly. kind of like, here's a text so for post. you guys, I'd recommend Twitter and Facebook and sometimes even LinkedIn um, if you were trying to reach, for example, just board game developers in the professional industry. I Most of you. them tend to be on uh, Twitter too. Yeah. I found that as well. Which which tends or recently to... Discord. I spend more time talking to developers on Discord than I do anywhere else. That's how I found you. <laughs> That's how I found a couple people. Um, yeah, no, Discord is actually with the ability to make the servers um, and mm. just talk, just like an IRC chat room or whatever. It's the new, uh, you know, the new aim type deal. It's the new yeah That's that, it. and it's like you don't have to see everything else someone is doing you don't have to look at their profiles on a page it's just hey i'm here yeah right that's it yeah i i mean we're having this conversation on discord i we know are. we're break we're breaking the fourth wall here but I, <laughs> I feel like that's that's pertinent information at this point um well, it's, it's a social media in itself it doesn't necessarily mean you can advertise here it doesn't exactly have a front end but just by personally networking, it works in the same way. Yeah, I, I can get that. So I'll use your uh, board game as sort of a good example. Can you lead mm-hmm. me through the process of like, because it, it does sound like you've you've done it the right way. Um, what was the process like to really promote Cutlass through social media? From scratch to shelf or building a campaign? Ooh, those are both good ones. Alex, which one do you want to hear? Uh, I assume we're talking about booting campaign at the moment. Because yeah, I haven't hit shelf yet is like the main difference between the two. I haven't even hit um, Kickstarter campaign yet. Um, but I have built okay. a few campaigns on Facebook for promoting the page. Um, and the main one was building the target market and finding the exact audience, um, which is really handy because I already know I'm going to go to Kickstarter. I already know what other products are similar to mine so i can or i can choose that as my audience uh, like i narrow it down to people that like the ascension board game or people that like magic the gathering um, and people that like kickstarter like if i know it's going to go on kickstarter why wouldn't i market to people that are already involved with kickstarter or people i know have already backed stuff before that's like free money mm-hmm. um, and then knowing exactly what location and gender my product appeals to which um, is pretty much 23 to 35. Uh, it's like 90% male and almost 100% in the US, which is why I'm like doing stuff like this, that being on a US podcast, being on US chat rooms, talking to people overseas, staying up until four in the morning just so I'm awake at the same time as you guys. <laughs> it's, um, it's 10 a.m. It's 10 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <it's> other days. <laughs> but like it's all about appealing to that target market and because that's where i know it's going to be going i have to aim everything that i'm doing towards that right Um, and then you can do other stuff like build your content towards those people like if i know that we've seen mostly by dudes of this particular age i need to know what those particular people like which is mostly sexy things (laughs) which i didn't particularly want to put in my game but my artist Mm. may have made a few requests um, that I've had to cave into, so I'm I'm trying to balance it really really well here. Right, they like those uh, breastplates that actually have a uh, form fitted to female. Yeah, I haven't actually done that yet. I don't think. Fortunately, that's, well, that's, that's good. There, there's a there's a there's a lot of a uh, back and forth on whether it's it's right or wrong. Such a bad that. trope. The yeah. one cact that I do have who is female, well endowed, and heavily armor is post-battle and most of what she's wearing is quite destroyed. So it's sort of just hugging on to where she is rather than being specifically made to emphasize those features, if that makes sense. No, that, that makes sense. It's That's the argument about that anyways. It's like, well, female armor wouldn't look like that. It would look like male armor because there's no difference mm-hmm. in armor. 
It's like, but uh, that's not sexy then. But it's accurate. <laughs> yeah. Being safe is sexy. <laughs> uh, I suppose that is very true. Yes. It, it, it's uh, really what you're going for, I suppose, it. in a game. That's why, that's why there are specific words for being safe. Hmm. Like safe? No, Nathan, I think you totally missed that joke. Oh, wait, no, I, that, that, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Good job, Nathan. Oh, I'm going to have to rate this episode explicit. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> so... So, uh, so, so, uh, Cutlass, it's been about four months in development, you were saying. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing that it's piratey themed. Yes. Okay. Um, what is, like, what do I do in Cutlass? <laughs> do I, do, do I do any swashbuckling? Uh, that's all I really wanted to know. I assume you use a sword. No, you use a Cutlass. Uh, there, cut it's, it, Nathan. Yeah, it's inherent. <laughs> a cutlass is a sword. Yeah, but it's a specific kind of sword, Alex. Yeah, it's a, a curved blade, usually with a... I think I want to say they usually have a basket hilt, but not always. Yes. Well, then that's how you should have defined it. <laughs> they're, they're essentially a, a heavier, uh, shorter scimitar. Okay, fine. Then uh, uh, do I use shorter <laughs> scimitars um, in the game? Yes. Yeah, you do. Um, so it's a it's a deck building card game, um, which uses pirate steel, which is for the most part cutlasses. But being pirates, they use whatever they can steal and get their hands on. So it's not exclusively that particular thing. It's not like it was made for them um, to generate incomes and then fight other players or kill giant monsters. We've got like the kraken, goddesses, um, Cthulhu type monsters and stuff like that. Um, in order to build huge treasure and retire, because every pirate's secret dream is to retire and get the hell away from the dangerous ocean. <laughs> that seems pretty legit, to be honest. Go back and get that buried treasure, and then buy things they like. Just retire on a small palm tree house on a beach somewhere. <laughs> I feel yeah. like if I were a pirate, I would retire far away from the beach, because I know pirates are near the beach. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> then where would you go? In Foresty the, type yeah. thing. On, on a lake somewhere, where you can't have pirates. There's a disparate... Cool, yeah, there's, there's a weird image that I just got of somebody in a in a pirate outfit and a peg leg with a like a hook for a hand just wading through the forest just trying to scare a bear off their lawn or something. You know, it's so, you know what I got was a pirate with a peg leg and a hook hand holding a margarita on a fold out lounge chair on a beach. That would That's, also be quite fun. That would be good. And and a little sign that says lake life or something yeah. like that. <laughs> they've decided to trade in the ocean for you know the nice ponds and lakes that's, and that's the world. pirates in the caribbean not pirates of the caribbean that's true <laughs> that's that is very true they are it's, it's they a, are caribbean adjacent it's a very different lifestyle yes it it certainly is um the, it, disney will never make a musical out of that though no <laughs> it's very unfortunate actually uh so, card building game. I'm going yes. to retire uh, to to my wonderful uh, Mar Margaritaville pond, and uh, and how am I going to do that? Um, well, there's a whole bunch of different ways in which you win the game. But the main measure of one's worth is loot. So you can get that by um, defeating huge monsters. Um, completing quests, killing your opponents, it all sort of stacks up and tracks what to what's in the game. And the more loot you have, the more powerful you are as a player as well as a pirate. Mm, okay. Now, uh, real serious question here: uh, Do I have to talk like a pirate while I am playing? Absolutely. In fact, the fact Good. that you aren't talking like a pirate right now is insulting. I'll be fixing that soon, sir. It's probably because he's bad at pirate talk. You shut your <laughs> damn mouth, ye you scurvy shut your dog. Scurvy dog. I'll, I make ye walk the plank, and then you get on Twitter, 
and you tell everybody that you've been planked by the great red beard. I, I, I had to dye the beard because apparently there was already a black beard. The, and I, the I, great and there was beard. copyright infringements going on there. We couldn't have that. I'm not that kind of pirate. Of You're yes. just pirating the name. Hashtag beach life. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a pirate bald beard. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense, you scurvy dog. <laughs> you'd be, you'd be, uh, what would you be? You know what you would be? You oh, would Lord. be, you would be hobo, you would be hobo chic Pete. <laughs> that would be what you'd be. And you'd, uh, you'd have some glasses, and you'd have like, uh, you'd have like the beanie. On top of your head, no. Would, but it would be like all natural organic fibers. What even? <laughs> that would be great. So, so my you, mind went to the planking, uh, walking the plank thing. What if we just have a bunch of millennials planking the plank? Uh, that would be great. Let's just do that. You're going to walk the plank. No, what are you doing? I'm planking on the plank. What? Yeah. Can you get a selfie while I'm down here? <laughs> I just need to get one. Hashtag eaten by sharks. <laughs> Hashtag pr- planking IRL. There we are. Mission accomplished. So this is this is how social media <laughs> management works, right? We, you, you, oh, exclusively. Oh, okay, good. I think I'm finally understanding this. So you have a pirate game. So mm-hmm. what you immediately do is you think of a bunch of planking references, and then yes. you just you just do a bunch of pictures or gifs. Of, of said That's planking. It. And then on, you use the correct yeah. hashtag, and then everyone sees how cool you are, and you become an innocent sensation. It goes yeah. viral. A- a- you need a- to, absolutely. Uh, you need to make sure you do everything you can on September 19th, though. That's uh, Pirate Day, isn't it? Yeah, that's International Talk Like Pirate Day. Yeah. Yeah, I isn't sort of the... missed it. Oh. Don't we celebrate right. the flying I spaghetti? Flying I thought we celebrated monster? the flying spaghetti monster on that day, too. I mean, he is linked with pirates, so you might. Yes. So like a flying spaghetti pirate? Yeah, you should totally do that. That would make perfect sense. And, uh, and then you can do hashtags for it. We can come up with some great ones. Yes. Hashtag cutlass, obviously. But then uh, mm. hashtag uh, spaghetti pirate. <laughs> and, sp- and spaghetti western pi- pirate. It's a mashup. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good times. Um... And uh, you should probably put board game in there, too. I imagine that's probably a, a good one. Or game dev. Yeah, Alice I Ash also use dev. fantasy um, mm. art. Like, it falls oh. into the category. But I it's guess, also big yes. enough to bring in people that see it and think it's kind of cool. Right, right. Yeah, so you you can see some uh, crossover between, like, the, the piratey thing and fantasy kind of falls into that same realm. A lot of it is about huge monsters. Mm. As well, so like showing off, um, we have already showed off a creature called Arvish the Corruptor, which is sort of like Cthulhu, like as close as we get, um, which is like this huge manipulative mastermind that can mind control people by touch. Oh, okay. <laughs> that does sound vaguely familiar, but very distinct in some ways. All right. Um, and you did mention Krakens. Yeah, there's a giant mecha kraken. Mecha krakens. Mecha kraken. Is Hashtag like a, mecha kraken. It's like mecha Godzilla, but waterbound. Yeah. yeah. So, like, my list of references is Godzilla, <laughs> Pacific Rim, and I was just like, I'm gonna make giant monsters that players can try and fight and kill, mm. and then like have other cool pirate stuff, and then have like really strong gods and goddesses, and it's always like the holy trinity of random fantasy things coming together. Mm, mm. Are there sirens? Yes, actually. Oh, good. Is because you stole something. No, I'm just kidding. He was hoping. Yeah. Uh, there's, yeah, there's two different. Like, we've got mermaids of the still water, and then we've got the sirens of the dire strait, which I, both I think... sort of do the same thing in-game, but they're both from a different place, if that makes sense. I, I assume they look mildly different, too. Yeah. Mm. Mermaids look like fish people. Sirens just look like ladies that want to kill you. Mm. And uh, do do they have to sing Dire Straits songs? 
Yeah, that's they're from the band. Oh, okay. Well, that's they're good. The, I mean, they're the they're roadies. Good singing. Yeah, they're the roadies. Excellent. It's all the lead singers that didn't quite make the cut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why they're little people in the band. <laughs> Because their career didn't take off. They have no other prospects. <laughs> and, and this is really the only gig that they could get after the after the band stopped playing. I, That's it. <laughs> money for nothing. Uh, but uh, I do I do have to ask a question. It's a very serious one again. Um, Mecha Kraken. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> does, does the Mecha Kraken rust in the seawater? Uh, yes and no. Okay. That's very vague. <laughs> um, it would, but it doesn't stick around long enough for it to really happen. Oh, okay. So uh, every day he be shuffling, and by doing that, uh, he doesn't have to get rust on him. Destroyed relatively early on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Good. Um, th- th- that's the real main question I had about Mecha Kraken. Uh, I- except, oh no, actually, I have another one. Does he have an internal power source? Yes, and okay. crew. Oh, there's a crew. What yeah. are what are the requirements to become part of the crew of a Mecha Kraken? Uh, you have to be octoplets. Oh wow, that is a very specific criteria. Well, that, how else are you going to each in unison operate eight tentacles? Well, I don't know. I didn't know octuplets had like magical like mind powers where they could like well, link in and have mind powers. And triplets should theoretically have one third more mind powers, right? <laughs> and uh, octuplets should just be super people. Well, yeah, but wouldn't it be like spread out too much? Like, I would imagine there's just way too many voices in my head at that point. I mean, I guess. But right, when I you're mean, all focused on rampaging the the streets and crashing down and destroying castles, I feel like you wouldn't be too worried. You'll be like that, uh, those five kids in Operation Kids Next, uh, Kids Next Door. Oh, yeah. sure. I was thinking more like Shazam, when he, he stops being a person and starts being a group of disabled children, <laughs> which I've right. yet to understand, but the no. way I grasp it is that they have a, a keyword and they all sort of assemble into a superhero. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it, it's, uh, is that sort of like a little bit like Power Rangers? You have I the know. Zords, and then the Zords become one Zord, and somehow all of their cockpits end up in the same place in the head of the Megazord. Yeah. Which, which, which always just bothered me in general, because I was like, well, if, if you have five Zords and you're automatically going to make them into a Megazord, why didn't you just start with the Megazord in the first place? Would save us yeah. so much time. You That's guess. typical storytelling, though. You start with like, "I'm gonna punch you." Oh, it didn't work. I'll get a sword. Oh, it didn't work. I'll try a gun. Oh, I'll get in a tank. Oh, I'll get in six tanks stacked on top of each other. Like that's just that's yeah, roll. yeah. It's just like uh, like halfway through the series, it was just like, "Well, we're gonna do the intros for like all five dinosaurs," and you watch them come out of the the woods and come off off of the, the lava fields or whatever and then automatically before they do anything at all it's like the five of them just get together and turn into a megazord and then you have to watch that animation three minutes later they finally get to punching the guy one time the kaiju and then uh, and then that's the end of the episode and yeah. it also it, and to, to be honest with you since i'm on the rant it also made me really really angry like why would would you even worry about if the power rangers themselves could battle the monster when you know rita repulsa is just gonna make him gigantic so you should just get the megazord to start with and what just like step on it yeah just step on it just step if you have megazord power it's not like it has to charge (laughs) they just they're just it's available at the start why don't they just uh, just 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 cut through all of the bull and just immediately say, "Okay, Rita, just make it big. We're gonna go get our dinosaurs, turn them into a megazord because the dinosaurs are really insufficient anyway, and then we're just gonna do the giant uh, kaiju on Mecha Battle at the very start of the episode, five minute episode, and we would be done with Power Rangers." Hashtag Megazord Forever. And that's that is your media campaign. That's how I'm linking this back in. All right, I was there. We really go. Loose, but I'll give it to you. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's fine. 
Um, segways are good. Hashtag segway. Um, Alex, what? <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. See here uh, on the same thing. It's you know if if you're gonna do that, then what's the point of having the little guys if you think they're gonna crush the Power Rangers or whoever? If you know they're just gonna get in the Zords if you start beating them. This this is also true. And, and at the same time, why don't you just attack them when they're combining the robots together? Because they're clearly unable to do anything. And it takes so long. <laughs> it takes like five minutes for them to actually do that. Boy, I'll tell you, I'm so glad we at least fixed Power Rangers while we were here. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't necessarily learn anything, but at least, at least we fixed a 90s show we watched. That's good. <laughs> It's the best thing we did all day. Really, since we started this show, I think fixing Power Rangers was the best accomplishment we ever had. Right, Alex? Yeah, that, this is the best show we've ever done. There you go. That's it. It's, Keith, aren't you so excited that you're on the best show that we've ever done because we fixed well, Power Rangers? Here, right? it's, it's, it's totally so because, you're, because your Mecha Kraken thing got us on this whole conversation. So really, if people don't like this, it's your fault. But that's, <laughs> your, <laughs> but, but that, but that's really okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, supposed, I know. That escalated pretty quickly. You're not supposed to game, uh, blame the guests for if, if the show isn't like... Maybe. Well, the world is weird now. Just go with it. Anyway, <laughs> the world has Mecha Krakens in it. I have to, like, uh, hose down the barnacles on the Mecha Kraken. I didn't like this job, but I need to get money so that I can retire to a beach. Hashtag pirate beach life. Now, the question I have is... First of all, I'm mm. going to get something to drink. <laughs> all right. I'm wondering how much of that you're keeping in the show. None of it. Anyway, <laughs> all of it, all of it, all of it stays. Um, so, the... All right. Sorry, my mind just blanked. I'm, I'm still thinking about Power Rangers. I can't help it. <laughs> Alex, t words, help me. What were you thinking of? I don't know. I was thinking about Zords. I want. <laughs> well, oh, if pirates fought Zords. No, see, I'm still, I'm still not there. I'm still not there. You're, you're, you're gonna have to help me. Um, Alex, since you do most of our like social media management for for the site, um, do you have any questions uh, for Keith specifically on that topic? Um, like with the site or just. I mean, I want to know how you get everyone to follow, you know, like you on Facebook pages, because we've got, like, 15. <laughs> okay. Um, we the podcasters get harder, because the, the highest engaging thing for users on Facebook is images. Mm -hmm. When your product doesn't really have an image to it, it makes it a bit harder. Um, an easy upgrade you can do is every time you upload a podcast, have an image for it that's got, like, the logo of the guest or, like, a, a brief graphic depicting what happened or the topic, so that kind of stuff. Like, every um, show we have has a has an image to go with it, but it's not really, like, specific to a brand or a game. It's not like, hey, this is a new thing for the game. It's like, this is just an image for our album or for the, okay. for the uh, website, um, so it's not blank. Yeah, an easy upgrade for that is to add, so for example, I'm here today, you add my logo in on it somewhere, like with guest Keith and his game Cutlass is talked about, and then when you post that, you tag my page in it. So it shows up on my page, and then everyone that likes my page knows that I was on this talk show, and obviously because I'm here, I will be posting for it as well, and then that creates the web that makes your, the same way, like every other guest, you tag them, include them in it, and... It's all about making more connections to different things. So, like the the way the Facebook algorithm works is that the more you have, the more it will display your things to people that follow you, or other things that people like your things. Friends will see. If that makes sense. Yes, I think that makes sense. Uh, there you go, Alex. Um, <laughs> he solved your problem. Oh, good. <laughs> He solved. I mean, your it's Facebook a good start. Problem. Yes, <laughs> all the problems have been solved. Yes, I hope. Uh, I hope we take that into uh, into account. Um, I I don't have many images for mine. I do have a, quite a few people that follow me, though. 
So that's pretty great. Well, there's going to be like 100 Zord pictures now, isn't there? Oh, I am putting Zord pictures all over Rift Hunters. I can tell you that much. That's going to be great. <laughs> They're going to love that. I can't wait. I can't wait for for my artist, <laughs> for my artist player to be like, "Why are there a bunch of Zords on the page? Why are you tweeting all this, man? Doesn't make any." You're sense. fighting Zords next. Oh yeah, totally. I'm fighting Zord. Oh, that would be a good one, wouldn't it? Damn you can, it! You can you can be the uh, the guys fighting the Zords. Well, but I wouldn't have you'd Zords. Win. You already exposed their weak point. You just fight them while they're assembling. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That would uh, that would work out great. I couldn't have them as like Zords, like like uh, uh, dinosaurs though. I would I would have to do something different with them, or maybe just Zords that wanted to just sit down and have tea. Make it bees. <laughs> just just bees that uh, combine to make a bigger bee. Just just a big B? Yeah. That that doesn't sound particularly scary at, not, at all. Not, not at all. The hive. Just call it just uh, something it's like a that. Giant bee that bleeds bees. <laughs> <laughs> so when bee have you heard it, more bees come out. Oh man. Blee bee bee bleeding. That's scary. Bleeding? Oh. Do you just call it bleeding? Bees no, bleed bees. <laughs> no, I, I call it bug mata. Um, so did you get that one? No. Yes. Stigmata, but with I bugs. You were talking about an armada of bugs. You can, call, no. you can call it Mothra, but that's a moth, so it'd have to be Be Beedra, which is a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, neither one of those is going to really work. It, no, it it's would be drill. That's a Pokemon. Be drill. It's be drill. That's work. a Pokemon. Now let's fix Pokemon. <laughs> since, but you know, since Keith is here, uh, he can tell us how to properly market our off-brand uh, Pokemon. You don't have so. off-brand Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, they're 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 uh, they're they're poke offs. They're like knockoffs, okay. but they're for Pokemon poke offs, something like that. Uh, and uh, my my uh, Pika Glue. Is uh, gonna be super popular with the uh, with the ladies, but okay, yeah, I, I I'm thinking that that's what it's gonna be. It's kind of like an uh, a rat, um, but it's got laser eyes. I think it's got laser eyes. It's a Mecha Pikachu. Mecha Chu. So it's Togedemaru. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> of course, they came and up with. They that. made like a steel electric mouse in the latest set. Oh, did they? I know they made the fake one that was like a Pokemon that just like put a sheet the over itself. That wanted to be a Pikachu, yeah. Yeah, that wants to be a Pikachu, and like apparently you never want to look at it. The lore behind it is that it's so terrifying to actually look at. <laughs> if you ever looked under the sheet, mm. one of those like a horrid uh, ca uh, uh, character descriptions from Pokemon. Never read the descriptions of those Pokemon. It's gonna Pokemon's terrify you. So bad. Oh my God! It's it. I I read Q Bones one time where he's talking where they're talking about how like they look up at the moon and they cry for their mother that they lost. It's yeah. It's so depressing. <laughs> like these poor Pokemon have been through. Which is a ghost inhabiting a toy of a dead child. Yeah. And it it chases after other children and tries to steal their souls in vengeance for the child that was originally lost. Mm hmm. Something like that. Yeah. And I'm just like. This got real deep three generations in. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's the koala that's always asleep, and it's because it never actually woke from the time it was born, and it can't wake until it dies. Like, like Pokemon are very, very disturbing if you actually get into the text. And Alex didn't know any of this, but now he's... Oh, I, I, I did. I did. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. Um, they're going to be quoting Tate off Swiftler soon. Yeah. Uh, they always will. It's, it's so much, uh, fun. I don't feel like we've really talked about Keith's game, but we have given <laughs> you a lot of great ideas for things that you could use as add-ons when you get to the Kickstarter. The expansion is going to be Poker oh, Ranchers. Yeah. Poker Ranchers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's great. Uh, and you can put Zords in it. Like, I think that that's really what we needed. We needed a Pokemon 
uh, Power Rangers mashup. That's what we've been kind of leading toward. Being able to catch Zords. I think <laughs> I think that that's great. And then once Got, you have them all, they all join up together. You to can combine them. Yes, yes. Gotta catch and combine them all. There we go. <laughs> That is your expansion, and it's a card. It, it's a card set collection game where you have to get all of the same cards. You catch all the cards, and then you can use the set of the cards to create an even bigger mega card out of it. And then you win, and you can sit on a beach with your margarita and talk about hashtag pirate beach life. There we go. It all ties together now. Mission accomplished. There you go. What just happened? I'm gonna tell you what happened. I, I'm gonna tell you what happened, Alex. I finally justified putting all of this into the episode, and that's what you really need to know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's important. But the but on a <laughs> on a serious note, which I think we've realized is never a serious note. Um, Keith, why cutlass and not another sort of curved blade? It sort of has a reputation as being a pirate weapon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, that's good. <laughs> Were you expecting more? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 guess, I guess not, but I was kind of hoping. Sometimes there's just something very interesting around that. Like, you know, I... I yeah, I, like, I, I, I briefly as a mentioned child. before how it's not necessarily just that sort of scimitar-type blade, where it was more just whatever they could get their hands on. That's sort of what piracy oh. is. It's a bunch of people that are dejected by society and do mm-hmm. their best to steal and kill to survive on the high seas. Mm-hmm. So some of that, like they might all have katanas just because they happen to raid um, a, a Japanese trading ship. or You know what I mean? Like it doesn't necessarily have to mm. be about what they had. It was about what they could get. Right. Right. I, I, I get that. I mean, uh, pirates are by nature opportunists. Hmm. So. I suppose you're wondering why it wasn't named Cannonball. Oh, that is a good question. Why wasn't it named Cannonball? I have many regrets in my life now. <laughs> <laughs> because you realize then you'd have to go on a run because the Cannonball run. No, that was that was bad. That was that joke wasn't even good when the good place did it. <laughs> We're not the good place. No, we are definitely not the good place. I'm feeling that right now. Um. Uh, but now, oh, you've seen the Good Place. I, you know, I haven't actually yeah. watched the Good Place. Um, it's really good. It is. Yeah, I saw like the first episode, and I haven't watched the rest of it yet. I got uh, caught up on other shows. Not surprisingly, uh, Power Rangers. I did not get <laughs> caught up on Power Rangers. I'm just remembering that from a long time ago in a far, You're far about away to place. Know. I'm about to go watch a million episodes of Power Rangers. That's that's what I'm. Well, they're only three minutes long, so I don't take you too long. Oh, that's true. You know, if you really just fast forward to the things where actually stuff happens, yeah, it's about three minutes long. Um, And uh, that's how I'm going to prepare for Cutlass because I know that it has something to do with Cutlass now. So, uh, so very loosely, loosely, yeah. No, that that they're gonna no Rita Repulsa uh, had. The, the Mecha Kraken. That was one okay. of the monsters she sent down. But it was just a squid. And then she uh, used the little bomb thing and turned it into a, a, a Mecha Kraken. That's probably what happened. Yes. Yes, that is. Yes, yeah, you sure? Anyway. Um, so, uh, Keith. Um, <laughs> since, none of, since, since none of that is real. Um okay. So, when you uh, you you were talking about that uh, Kickstarter, I am actually going to get it to questions now. So the Kickstarter uh, hasn't happened yet, but what are you planning on doing um, to promote Cutlass as you kind of gear up toward toward those steps? Um, I've actually got quite a large plan for that. Um, right now, we're actually working on a graphic novel, um, which is the backstory of the main characters in the game. So you get to learn a little bit about why these characters are important, why these are the playable heroes, um, how they interact with other characters, which gives you sort of nice little fluff and lore interactions when you're actually playing the game because you're like, oh, I'm playing as Tyler and 
my opponent has chosen my arch nemesis. So I now know that we are not going to be friendly and I might want to play into that and like use that interaction and if you want to role play following that kind of thing. Or if you have four players playing, for example, you might pick people in particular that are allies against people that are enemies because of that sort of low interaction. Um, that was really off topic. That's the entire okay. show is off pretty topic. off topic. So I mean, yeah. off topic. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're... I'm allowed at least one, right? Yeah, you're, you're, you're allowed at least an hour's worth. At least it was contextual. <laughs> you had that. Go- it was. <laughs> um, really, everything we've talked about up to this point has really not been uh, relevant for the most part to your your game or your career. So I'm perfectly fine with you talking about what you'd care to. Um, I am just kind of uh, kind of interested because I, I would imagine since you know social media is your your wheelhouse that uh, you know exactly what you're gonna do when you're getting around to to you know promoting your game. Yeah, so the plan is to use stuff like the graphic novel. I've got another tie-in um, card game coming out. It's a micro game, and it's set in the universe of Cutlass, but mm-hmm. it's more about the locations and architecture and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, it will come out, and that will build an audience, and people will follow us on social media and so on. And then the micro game will come out, and people that like the micro game might be interested in other stuff because it's in the same universe, the theme might resonate with them and they might be interested and then go on and check out the greater stuff um and then like we'll show off more parts of the game and then you'll have stuff like reviews and demos and people actually playing the game and seeing the art and all that kind of stuff as it slowly releases more things building up to the kickstarter uh, until eventually like the facebook page will have a large audience in which you can be like it's a kickstarter campaign everyone that's following here this is what you've been waiting for all this time um same goes for twitter and instagram and all that kind of stuff and you can show off the journey to getting there and then people will be able to be like wow this is really cool this has already got so much depth to a product like mm-hmm. already having a huge story behind it that i can read online already having another product that ties in with already having all these really well developed characters that i want to learn more about and play as right. um, so when the, it finally comes people are like i want to be involved i want to learn more about this so i want to be able to play this game with my friends right right Okay, good. So, so there's there's a little bit of a hype machine that goes into this, or a lot of one. It, it's, that's how it wins Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say win because it is pass fail, and <laughs> if a lot of people don't also want it to win, then it won't. You know what I mean? Like you need to have a huge support of the kind of the community in order for it to successfully fund. Which means that mm-hmm. you have to appeal specifically to those people. Right. Right. Um, the question that I am now realizing I probably should have asked you about mm-hmm. an hour ago, and I'm going to now, is uh, let's say a lot of people have different projects that they're working on right now, and they have a lot of trouble figuring out how to like navigate uh, through the, the weeds of, of social media, uh, which is so relevant now. Uh, mm-hmm. Basically... What would you suggest those people do to try and increase their visibility online? For people who are using multiple products? Uh, people that are, are working on a project want people to get exposed to it. Okay. Um, so first you need to figure out what you can show, mm-hmm. and especially with, um, so, for example, 70% of Facebook traffic is mobile. So if you have a video, it's much less likely to be watched than just a picture. Because once you've seen the picture, you've already, like, all of the information using your eyeballs. But when you see a video come up on the thing, you're like, I don't have time, or I'm not interested enough to want to sit and watch this whole thing. So that um, you then need to pick things that you can show that will quickly appeal to the general mobile user. Now, I know that when I'm scrolling through Facebook, I pretty much only hover on competing products because I want to see what other people are doing. Um, but Because that's I know that's what appeals to me, right? Other people might not even be interested. You, if your target market is completely wrong, you might be showing off things people aren't even interested in. And then if it's not even engaging, then it's going to get nowhere. So 
in summary, you have to make sure that you have something that people can quickly identify with. Um, it needs to be quick and engaging. So like a short hook text line, um, a really eye-catching image usually is good. Um, and then you have to have something called a call to action. And the call to action is like, um, hey, we're on Kickstarter now, come back us. Or, hey, make sure you like my Facebook page because I'm going to be posting things soon. Or join my mailing list so I can tell you when the game is released, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so you've grabbed someone, you've caught them with your hook, and they're now interested in your product. And then the call to action gives people the ability to follow, and that's how you drive your results. All right. Excellent. Uh, so uh, everyone out there, I uh, hope you learned something today. Uh, it probably wasn't from me. and uh, <laughs> it definitely yeah, I learned not. a lot about Power Rangers. Oh, that's good. I'm really glad. Um, I, I do have to make a note that um, Leslie was on her Delve channel a second ago, uh, and she really was hoping that Cutlass uh, referred to the car. There's a car. Chevy Cutlass, I believe. Uh, is it? Is it Chevy? I think, Chevy. I think so. Anyway, yes, there, 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 there is a car that was once produced that was called the Cutlass, and uh, and she is really hoping that the pirates can drive a Cutlass. I mean, maybe in retirement. Well, with all that money that they got from the pirate booty. I'm imagining like a skit where a pirate goes up to a used car dealership and he's got mm -hmm. this big bag of gold right and he's like i need to buy a car and the car dealership guy is like okay let me show you this camry and he's like camry that's not a very fearsome name why would i sail around in a camry <laughs> and he shows the next car and he goes okay this is a jaguar and he goes oh that sounds a little more interesting but i don't really know if i feel comfortable riding around on an animal and he goes oh okay i've got it i've got the car for you he takes him over and shows him the cutlass and the pirate buys it immediately <laughs> yes uh um, sounds like a uh, comic waiting to happen oh yeah, yeah. that's that's good to be the back pages of the graphic novel it's just like all the visual gags that we couldn't add to the storyline but still really want to do <laughs> yes i i like that and uh you know there's there's such a dearth of pirate jokes in the world today i feel like especially like set in modern times and, and I feel like that's a missed opportunity. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I, I really do. I think, um, like, are the are the pirates in Cutlass modern pirate? They're they're period piece pirates, right? Yeah. So, um, Cutlass the board game is set in an alternate timeline where there was no mass extinctions. There's no ice age, nothing like that. Um, oh. And the way that species died out was because humans hunted and killed them. So, like, there's no mega dinosaurs or anything like that because humans killed and ate them all. Mm. Um, but there's still, like, really, really giant dangerous things because humans haven't been able to hunt and kill them all yet. So, like, there's still dragons um, and stuff like that naturally. But then this other side event happens where a void opens due to... Um, sort of comes about because of the way that they have their religion. It's like... you pray to God all this time and so many people keep doing it that God answers the phone sort of thing. But because these people are more interested in occult things and they're all trying to tap into power from this other place, that the other place opens up. Oh. What comes out is sort of like the things of nightmares, like the giant octopus type things, the Mecha Kraken, mm, Mecha body, Kraken. So on and so forth, um, in where that danger factor for this universe and the pirates themselves, like, most of their job is to either safely get goods through the waterways to other places for trade, for valuable resources and food or whatever, but they're also sort of like mercenaries and vanguards in which they have to protect these things. Or the outcasts that are now scavenging and trying to steal from those valuable tradeways. Oh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm so surprised that it took us this long to actually get to the part where it's an alternative timeline. Alex, why didn't you just brief me on that? I you know, <laughs> sorry. Jeez, I, I, I mean, alternate timeline is perfect. Pirates deserve alternate timelines. That it's makes the them alternate so much timeline better. where the pirates win. It, it's yeah. the timeline where they steal time. Yeah. They they steal time and they, and they made marry the alternate it. timeline. 
they bury time, and then they go and dig it up so that they have all the time in the world so that they can sit on a beach with their margarita and have the hashtag pirate beach life. <laughs> that's, how, that's how the timeline works. Is it? <clears throat> it's not a time share, though. No. Oh, okay. Pirates don't it's share anything. Kind of pirates. <laughs> no, no, that that is true. Pirates do not share. Alex, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I, I got nothing to follow that up. Um, <laughs> so how? Uh, long since I, I'm gonna go back to actual questions. That's a thing I'm gonna start doing. I still, I'm still thinking about swords. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, how? Like, like you, it's a card game, so I'm imagining that it's uh, it's a pretty fast-paced game. Like, it doesn't take a, a long time to actually play uh, around. Um, it's more of a Magic the Gathering. Magic oh. Gathering isn't necessarily a long game, um, but you can mm. drag it out if that's your <laughs> condition. That makes sense. Uh, um, Cutlass yeah. is sort of a forty-minute card game. Okay. Right. Um, whereas there are ways of dragging it out, but there's also ways of shortening it down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The way that Alex and I play Magic: The Gathering, it's like an hour and a half game. So yeah. we know what you're talking about. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, now, uh, since you were talking about Magic the Gathering, now, are there expansions that you're hoping to do for Cutlass in the same um, basic way so that it, they did it with that? It depends on how well the base set goes. There is mm -hmm. already story for expansions. Like, the whole, right. the whole plan is that, like, there is a definite period of time in which the base set mm -hmm. and, that, mm -hmm. and then after that period of time, other things happen. Um, and the first expansion, which would be uh, the new guiding goddess. Um, and the Mecha Kraken has been destroyed, and a lot of people are starting to scavenge that and use parts in order to create this new technological revolution. And it sort of goes from being Cthulian pirates to this steampunk wonderland, like really fast, um, because like the salvaging, the salvaging and scavenging goes so quickly, and they're able to build so many cool things that so they go from being in sailboats to being in Zeppeloids to try and avoid the dangerous seas. Oh, but but Mecha Kraken's gone. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, had a good run. Well, I would have I would have piloted the Mecha Kraken with my pirate crew. Well, that would have been cool, actually. You just like yeah. commandeer the vessel with like seven yes. other dudes. That would have been pretty sweet. Yeah, but Black flag uh, and just like roam around, squash and stuff. Oh, yes. that would have been nice. Yeah. Then you team up with the other five Mecha Krakens and you become Mega Kraken. No, stop. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. not Kraken Zord. All of the heads like connect to the tip and it's just like Oh yeah. This well you know what you can arms. You know what you can do? You can just have the, the, the regular Zords on the on the uh, the eight individual uh, tentacles of the, the Mecha Kraken. And it's like putting they, boxing gloves on a squid. Yeah, exactly. Here's here's my T Rex sword, <laughs> and I'm gonna punch you with it. There, take that, and then uh, and then uh, it's powered by a Pikachu. <laughs> on a treadmill. On a treadmill. Pikachu on a treadmill powers the Mecha Kraken Zord. This is the best ever. I like this, and uh, I think <laughs> you're right. You do have a lot to work with for expansions. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you certainly do. Um, so, uh, so, so, like uh, Me Mecha Kraken Zord online, and uh, and make sure to to retweet it as many times as possible. And hashtag Kraken Zord. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that would be the Purple Ranger, right? We, uh, there was never a Purple Ranger, so the Purple Ranger needs something if they ever make one. Uh, or orange. There needs to be an orange ranger. That's when you combine the red and yellow rangers. Well, yeah. Like if they got married? Yeah, because, you know. Well, I, I, no, I, I mean, I, I kind of get that. And then they have a little baby uh, power ranger, and it's, a, it's an orange zord. But no, that, doesn't orange. Really, it, that doesn't really explain the green power ranger. Because uh, Tommy was not the baby 
of uh, whatever those two other ones were. He, it's he's, he's taking after the colors. Of Trini and Billy. Screen. Yeah. Uh, oh. He's, you know, he's a red, green, blue. Um. Uh, right, but he's still not a primary color, and that doesn't make that. But then he became the white Power Ranger because then they they I, I guess because binary colors are are tricky. Um. <laughs> I guess. Uh, but then, didn't they bring the Green Ranger back when they did the... No anyway. I, I, honestly, I think you're thinking far too deep into this. Okay, so what I'm really asking is, are any of the pirates actually secretly Power Rangers? <laughs> um, yes. How did Go you know? I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. When, when you came on this show, did you think that this was going to happen? I guess is, is really a big question. I, I have to start asking more guests. Did you if think I said that... yes, I'll be lying through my teeth. That's fine, uh, and that is perfectly acceptable. I, <laughs> I just I got onto a train of thought, and uh, it derailed really quickly, and I need a Zord to pick up all the pieces of it. Or it, a it derailed dragon. right out of the station. It went two feet out the station and crashed. I, I, I was playing Silver Streak in my mind, and it just barrels through the, the station at the very end, and, uh, and then you need the Zords to pick up the pieces. That's how that works. You, ha you happy with that explanation, Alex? Sure. I'll, I'm pretend pre I'll pretend anything if it makes you shut up. Okay, great. Well, <laughs> hey, I I'm officially shutting up, so please, <laughs> take it from here. No, 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 that's good. Take, take it oh, from here, oh mighty Alex. What Ugh. does the wise one have to say? <sighs> Yawns. Excuse me. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Yeah, that's why I talk. Because you make me tired? <laughs> because because when, I ask, when I say, go ahead and talk, you go, ooh. <laughs> thanks, thanks, lethargic Wookiee. Um, Keith. Lethargic Wookie is w Wookie, by the way, is trending right now. Um, Keith, uh, <laughs> I honestly don't know where to go from uh, that. <laughs> I wish I did. But there's a um, cute little repair store down near me that you might want to check out because your segue is broken. Yes, it certainly it's certainly it's from the bears. They're heavy. Yes. Uh, for the record, do not let your bears near a Segway. They will ride them and enjoy it tremendously. Uh, <laughs> there's no tie-in I can do to Zords at this point for that. Good. But that would, that would make an interesting Pokemon. Just a bear. And, oh, an Ursa Ring. Just put an Ursa Ring on a Segway. Oh, it evolves with an item and becomes Steel-type as well. Oh, there you go. And the Electric. Good one. Oh, yeah, that's right. And rechargeable. You can plug your Ursa ring in. And, and you can recharge it with the sun. So it has, like, Volt Absorb or something? Yeah, I think so. Like, that ring on its chest is actually just a solar panel. That just turns into a giant solar panel, and its legs just become wheels, and it becomes gyroscopic. And uh, that's how you get... Um, uh, Oh, I don't know what you would call that at that point. Um, bear way. A bear way. A bear way, yeah. Exactly. Uh, it's a... Uh, or you just go straight bear hug. And the whole idea is that, like, you can, you can ride on a bear hug, and the bear will just wrap its little bear arms around you and squeeze really tight, and then you can just ride the bear around. It, it's a rideshare program. Um... I, I talked way more than I imagined I was going to talk on this episode. I thought I was I was going to stop. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't either, Nathan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> was there anything else you wanted to touch on, Keith? Um, <laughs> since... Like all my pages. Buy all okay. my products. <laughs> In short, you know, yeah. There's at least 10 minutes of usable audio in this episode, and I think that that's really good. That's <laughs> but but the, the extended one that we do on YouTube will be so entertaining for people. <laughs> Thank the Power Rangers episode, Feet Keith, for three minutes. 
Yes, absolutely. It will just be pictures of Power Rangers throughout the entire YouTube video. It will be uh, terrific. Uh, now I have to do that. Um, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to just uh, segue out. Uh, and then you can uh, tell everybody where to find more information about you and Cutlass, which is probably going to be the most informative thing that that we've said, I think, possibly, on the episode. Um, and we'll tell people how they can find us, although I think that they probably know already, but still, it will be fun. I must be hungry. I think that must you, be You late. must be. I was right. going to eat dinner and then he said, oh, by the way, don't forget. And I was like, damn, I did. And now, uh, and, and I'm probably just thinking about food, which is why I'm bringing up Pikachu a lot, because he looks delicious. And Zords, because they're inorganic, and I think it's making my tummy, you know, just like kind of close up a little bit. So I'm gonna did, do you a want to, uh, did you want to do an outro then, Nathan? I'm going to do an outro. How about that? It's a weird yeah. thing I'm going to try. All right, Keith, bear with me on this one. Has a tendency okay. to go wrong. Um, all right. <clears throat> uh, Alex, do you think you can eat a Zord? I, I don't think that you'd want to eat a Zord. Oh, are you kidding I me? I think you could if you really wanted to. People have eaten airplanes, so why not? Uh, well, you know, uh, it proves that you are not a synth. Well, that's good. Yeah, it certainly is. Um... Now, uh, Alex, if anyone out there would like to uh, absorb more Delve-related information that does not involve Zords and or Power Rangers, uh, or pirates that like hashtags, where could they go? I, you could go and find us on the oh, interwebs. <laughs> you could surf the mighty seas of the ocean deep. Uh, you can find us on Delvecast.com. And when you go there, you can find all sorts of wonderful things besides Delve. You can you can find Still Kicking, which is uh with his eh, yeah. I'm not going to continue that. Uh, that's uh Jonathan Politis's uh article series that he does on the weekends to uh, do a Kickstarter roundup, which is great. Uh, you can find Orbital Earthcast, which is that. Uh, stupid thing I do, and you can find uh, developer diaries uh, from uh, developers all over the internet. And I, I know, it's pretty great. Um, Keith, if anyone wants to find uh, you or Cutlass, where can they go? Um, if you type in at Cutlass Board Game, you can find us on Facebook, which is the extension for that. On Twitter, it's at Cutlass Game. On Instagram, it's at Cutlass Board Game. And we've got our own website, which is www.cutlassboardgame.com. Beautiful. All right. Then you can find all the Cutlass-related stuff that it might involve something that's Cthulhu-esque and might have a Mecha Kraken. It definitely has a Mecha Kraken. That's Mecha not Kraken a lie. Found. Mecha Kraken can be found, not associated with Zords, just for the record. It, it does not associate itself with Zords. Uh, you can also find us on the iTunes and the Google Play. And please like and review and subscribe while you are there. Uh, the Zords will appreciate it. You can also find us on Twitter. Uh, I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and our show is at Delve Podcast. And yeah, that's basically everything, I think. Is it oh, Alex? Yes. And we're using Discord for the first time to record a show, so let us know if you thought it was decent. Yes, let us know, because we do have our Discord channel at DelveCast, and, uh, and that's a fun thing to go on, and we try to interact with people uh, whenever we can, uh, and, uh, and hopefully that will be, uh, that'll be something fun for everybody out there. Yeah, so come join us. There's a link in the uh, description of the show. Come Good. join us on the high seas of Discord. You can yell at Nathan for talking about Power Rangers for half an hour. I talked about Power Rangers because this starts with a P and so do pirates. That's why that it explains everything. And that's also why I started talking about Pokemon. Everything with P's. Uh, and, uh, oh, that's what you call the segue. Pegway. Pirate. Wow. You got there in the end. Yeah, I got there <laughs> at the end. It, <laughs> oh my god 
Do you need a ride sharing service? That's how you make your money. Entrepreneurial. Couldn't they just use the boats for the ride sharing service? Uh, that's what Pegway is. It's okay. it, it, or or uh, uh, it's 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 Uber for boats. Um, oh, I realized what that's called, and I don't want to call it that. Uh, never mind. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a ferry. No, I was gonna say boober, and I don't want to call it that. Or uh, wow. or ways. Oh, waves. It's like ways, but with a V. Wave wave ways. Lift. Oh no, lift. Um. Uh. 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 Whiff. Uh, 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 it's whiffed. Yeah, that's the next big app. Is uh uh uh. It's, it's, it's just called non- Tides. Yeah, it's just called Tide? Tides. Yeah. Tides. Yeah. Prince of Tides. It's uh it's great. Everybody's using it now. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> um so <clears throat> uh Keith, we are so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and we apologize profusely on behalf of Basically every franchise we referenced here, including our own, um, because uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know if we helped you out at all, but uh, at least we had some fun. <laughs> well, that's, that's the main point. Yeah. I don't know if you had fun, but I know we did. <laughs> I know I learned something. You what did? did you learn? What it was. <laughs> I what it was. But it, I learned it, something. It might take you like a day or so to really absorb this conversation and realize that it, it was almost like, and I, I'm starting to realize, I think most of our guests feel this way. It does feel like you just went down the rabbit hole in Alice in Wonderland and you took the wrong pill. You got on the wrong Uber. I got on the wrong Uber. Where? <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, and I ended up in Soho. I wanted to be in Brooklyn. I don't know what's going on. Um, Alex, uh, do 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 you feel like you're often in Wonderland? So- yeah, I I just kind of I sit back and absorb what's going on and just kind of go, oh, man. Are you having a very merry on birthday? Yes. <laughs> Great. All right, <clears throat> everyone. Uh, Keith Franks, I want to thank you for being on this show. <laughs> Anytime. <clears throat> you don't have to say that. It's okay. <laughs> um, we, we, we understand. But Cutlass looks cool, and I'm glad that I know more about social media. So thank you for that. And uh, thank you all for listening. And uh, uh, be good to each other. And be good to your swords. <laughs> go, go eat dinner, Nathan. Feed them regularly. And make sure that they eat only two Pikachus a day. Very important. All right, everyone. (laughs) On that note. Goodbye.